know the story. The serpent tempts Eve, Eve takes the fruit, she eats, gives to Adam, and he eats the fruit, and their eyes were opened. And it says they knew they were naked, and so they covered themselves. They, they put on clothing because they knew that somehow they were exposed. And God comes and he says, all right, where are you, Adam? I don't find you. And Adam says this, I heard you. And I was afraid, right? I was afraid. I had this overwhelming emotion of fear, and I hid. God asks, well, who told you? You're not supposed to know that. Did you eat from the tree that I told you not to? Right? Like, if you didn't do what I told you not to do, you wouldn't know that you were naked. You wouldn't need to hide. Did you do what I told you not to do? And Adam, in one more verse, in one verse, becomes an excuse-making victim. Well, the woman you gave me made me do it. Right? You can see what happens there. First of all, he passes the blame. It's her. And, and he doesn't even really pass the blame to Eve. He passes the blame to God. You gave me that woman, right? Like, it's your fault, God. How, I mean, it right? sounds like an America, 21st century American man. It's not my fault. It's the woman or you. It's God's fault. And you can see in this story, in these two brief verses, it's exposing the epidemic of irresponsibility. He didn't control his emotions. He didn't control his words. And he did not control his actions. Now, responsibility, we're going to throw it up there, the word responsibility, it is defined as, as follows. Responsibility is being accountable for something within, listen to the words, something within your power, your control, or management. Listen to it again. Responsibility is to be accountable for something within your power, control, or management. That's the, the dictionary.com, the, the language that it gives to the word responsible. And as warrior saints, fellas, we are called to be accountable for things within our control. You see, when we are crucifixional and take control of our lives, we are possible, we have the possibility to control the outcomes of our lives. Things don't happen to us, things happen because of us. When we become responsible and take control of our lives, this is not to say that we abandon the grace of God. This is not to say that we keep God out of our lives, I'll do it all myself. That is not to say it at all. But it is to say when we become responsible men, we take control for things that happen. And so you ask, all right, I got it. How do we do that? How do we take control of our lives being responsible men, true warrior saints? We have three practical points. We're going to go through them at some, in some detail. They are to take responsibility of your emotions, your words, and your actions. To take responsibility for your emotions, your words, and your actions. Now, first, to take control or take responsibility of our emotions. You know, it's a hypersensitive world, right? Everybody's really sensitive. And, and we, we see, like, the language is, the language that we use today is offended, right? That's offensive. Or whatever else they call it. Hate speech, whatever. It's offensive. And I'm like, oh, uh, did you get a boo-boo? Poor baby, get a wah-wah. Like, what are you, a, a Starbucks barrister with a top knot and skinny jeans? Come on, man. So what if people say things that are offensive? Look, I'm Lebanese. I'm a Christian, and I'm a priest. I have been called a towel head and a camel jockey. I have been called oppressive and a racist, and I have been called a pedophile. I'm none of those things. I've never even been on a camel, right? Like, I'm none of those things. And yet, it's frustrating, and it's, a, it's, it's irritating, and it is offensive. But you know what never once happened from anyone calling me those names? Death. I didn't die. I'm still here, right? None of those things caused harm to me that I didn't allow. I took responsibility for my emotions. So that, in the words of Forrest Gump, stupid people say stupid things. Move on from it, right? I know that's not how he said it exactly, right? All right stupid is and stupid does, but it's my words, okay? Like, the point I want to get here, like, and we hear it from the book of Proverbs. It's beautiful. Listen to this verse. I'm going I'm to talk you through this verse in chapter 12. The fool or the vexation of the fool is readily available. It's, it's, it's visible at once. The vexation of a fool. Vexation meaning the irritation, the offense of a fool is immediately recognizable. But listen to the rest of it. But a prudent man, a wise man, ignores an insult. I'm not going to give anyone who calls me a camel jockey any power over me. I have taken responsibility for my emotions to know that 
Stupid people say stupid things. Maybe even I was that guy once who said something to someone, right? I have taken control, responsibility for my emotions, and I let insults go by. Let the women get irritated and offended, but men, man up. Number two, to take responsibility for our words. There's this beautiful and horrible word in the Arabic language, inshallah, right? Now, for those who may not know the Arabic language, inshallah means, literally translated means the Lord willing, God willing, if God so wills, right? But it has become a farce and a lie. Hey, John Doe, I'm having a dinner party. Will you come over? Inshallah, right? That's what they say. It's what you all say, right? Like, in other words, yeah, I'm kind of hedging and I'm going to, you know, if something better comes up, I mean, maybe I'll commit now, but I don't want to be stuck with it or I don't want to offend you. Inshallah, right? We say these words. Yeah, like, oh. God willing, right? Like, God is not interested in willing whether you go to a dinner party or not. Don't put that on God. Don't say inshallah. Let your yes be yes. Hear these words from Jesus. Jesus Christ himself is telling us, do not let your words, fellas, be empty. Take responsibility for your words. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, he says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you say it, do it. Anything else, listen to the rest of his words, Anything else is from evil, right? So if you say, Arabs, listen, if you say inshallah and you don't mean it, it's from evil, right? That's not me, that's Jesus. You follow that. St. Paul has a powerful statement about this in 2 Corinthians. They're all laughing at me because they know they all say it, right? All right. You know, there's a powerful statement in 2 Corinthians here where Paul is saying, like, do I go around, listen to his words, making plans like a worldly man, saying yes or no at the same time. By the way, in, in, in Arabic, that's translated as inshallah, yes and no at the same time. That's what it says in the Bible. It's there, right? He is not someone who's going to say yes and no at the same time. And James, we'll end with this one. The Apostle James, in his letter in Holy Scripture, also says, let your yes be yes and your no be no, right? Take responsibility for the words that you say. Don't swear by any oaths. And if you do, you will be under condemnation. It's harsh. It's a tough word, right? Katakrisis in Greek, like condemnation, judgment. If you say yes and turn it into a no. Responsible men, real warrior saints, take responsibility for our words. And we put meat on the bones of our words by practical point number three, taking responsibility for our actions right? If you say it, you still got to do it. They have to match. That's how it works. And one of the things that we do is to become excuse-making victims, just like my landscaper. As I started this morning, heads are going to roll. Well, I'm not going to chop off your head. Whose head are you talking about? You're responsible, but she passed it to the work crew. Do you understand? And that's something that as warrior saints who take responsibility for our actions cannot do. Look at the verse again that we heard from the beginning uh, in Genesis 3. Look what, what Adam does to his wife, right? The woman you gave me. Like, he passed the blame. He became a victim. It happened to him. And ultimately, what's he saying? You gave me, God. You are the villain, is what he's saying about God, who gave me this rotten woman, who gave me that fruit that made me sin. Sorry? Our women aren't rotten. I'm just paraphrasing Adam, right? That's, but I mean, that's the message there, right? You see what's happening. He became an excuse-making victim. It is time, brothers, to take responsibility for your actions. And if you do something that isn't good, which you do and you will and you have, for none are without sin, none of us save Christ alone. If you make a poor decision or speak an ill word, or if you go somewhere you shouldn't go, do something you shouldn't do, or behave the way you should not behave, it is so simple. Own it and apologize. That's it. Just say, I'm sorry. My fault. I did it. We already know you did it. Don't pass the blame, right? Take responsibility for your actions. They are your actions. You took them. Own them. And most of them are awesome. Every so often, some of them aren't awesome. Those are the ones that you need to own as well, even more so, and say, hey, friend, I hurt you. I'm sorry. 
You're not bigger than that. None of us are bigger than to apologize to someone if we are owning our actions. And I promise you this, when you do that, people already know and they respect you greatly because they know you are not a male, you're a man because you're owning your actions. You've taken responsibility for your emotions, for the words that you speak, and for the actions that correspond to those words. And in this, brothers, is not a male. In this is a man. In this is a warrior saint. Please, do all that you can in every single moment of every single day of your lives to take responsibility seriously and to do so through the power and grace of Christ our God, who together with his Father, the all-holy life-giving Spirit, bless and keep you. Amen.